It's Unstable Topic with Sarah and Maggie. Hey, bestie. Hi, bestie. All right. So we talked about this while I was walking the other day, and it's a fact about you, and I'm sorry that I'm putting you out like this, but it's something that I've very always been impressed with. It was a, what? Before MJ was born, you decided on a whim to take the LSATs. Oh, yeah, I did. And it no, was, MJ, had, I did have MJ. I did, did it while I was, I had MJ. I didn't know I was going to have, be pregnant with Arthur when I actually took the LSATs. Oh, is that what it was? It was Arthur? Yeah, because I decided to take the LSATs while I was um, like hanging out with the baby, you know? What, that's interesting that mom brain up late, maybe that's what it was, up late at night nursing and your wackadoodle schedule your brain was like you know what i'm just gonna try and take this super hard test that people prepare months for and you didn't prepare at all i did prepare i well I, the reason the reason why i did it was because i was like i need to do something with this noggin of mine because mm. it is like you get the you get mom brain you're so tired you're like i'm not talking to anyone i think i went to Like MJ was probably like two months old and I went to the DCH women's social Christmas party and I was like, I can't even have a conversation with people because I've only stared at a baby for (laughs) three months. I was genuinely like, I am the dumbest human in the world right now. And so I got an LSAT book, like a prep book. And then I love doing it. It's so fun. It's just like logic puzzles. Mm -hmm. And so I had such a good time and I was like, I'm going to take the LSAT. And then I was like, and then I'm going to become a high powered attorney. And then I'm going to make so much money that then I just took the LSAT. Like with me, I understand that what you're saying. So after Walter and Annie, you, you want to use your brain outside of scheduling feedings and staring at a baby and coordinating life. Um, I I didn't take the LSATs. I didn't buy like an LSAT book. Like that to me gives me so much, not anxiety, like ugh. Like to take a test again. Like when I left school, I'm like, thank goodness I never have to take a test again. But it's different. It's like, it's not like um, memorizing facts test, you know? It's like, it's like read this, read this story or like, oh, here's a puzzle. It's like, oh, so-and-so said X, Y, Z, which one of these statements is true? Oh, so I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's more logic. All it like there's no math. I guess it wouldn't be math portion. Well, it could be math portion if you're gonna be like a tax attorney. Yeah, I w- I wouldn't have done it if it was a math test. <laughs> Although, wait, I think around the same time, I feel like this is what happens with every child. Like in the postpartum period, I have a different personality and different hobby <laughs> that I pick up. And so with MJ, I, d- I do think I like retook like eighth. I would do like eighth grade star tests. Really. Just to like see how I would score, <laughs> like, like are you smarter than an eighth grader, you know? But just like for something to be like, I need to be doing something. What did you do after uh, Robbie? This podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. This is my postpartum hobby. Is Sarah and I making podcasts? Yeah, we were we were doing like movie and we were doing work. We were we did work. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I just dove into the monthly junk, unstable topics work. I love after it, Robbie. I, yeah, you did, and I was here for it. I was here to catch you and not dive. Right after Arthur, I got really into like watercolors. You and did, doodling, you know, mm-hmm. and poetry, and poetry. Yeah, I did some poems. I think it's awesome. I also want to make sure everyone notes like you did very well on the LSATs. And I and I looked. I didn't hit my goal. Well, your goal was as a person that would probably spend. I mean, you you got a book, and I didn't realize you did that. But that's the bare minimum. Like people yeah. like practice for a while. They didn't just have a baby usually. And you went in there and you crushed it. You did great. I did like statistically. I I got a one fifty seven. A one fifty seven is great. It wouldn't move me to go to Harvard. But who wants to go to Harvard? You know. Oh, that's my goal. I was like, I'm going to get a full ride. <laughs> oh, you wanted a full ride to Harvard. Okay, my mistake. My mistake. Yes. No. I was like, anything less, anything less than a full ride to Harvard is a complete failure, and I'll never talk about this dumb test ever again. Well, I feel like I might have threatened you a little bit talking about it, knowing that that was your goal. 
And I feel like with that, it's a fantastic transition into this fact. Maggie, you ready for your fact? Oh, I can't wait. Okay. When threatened, sea cucumbers shoot out their internal organs, which are poisonous to predators. They'll sometimes get rid of their entire digestive system, but their organs grow back. Hmm. Isn't that wild? Yeah. If you hadn't said their organs grow back, I would have been like, this doesn't make any sense. (laughs) It's like, wow, I'm scared. Let me just throw my organs out. Interesting. And that works, huh? The other creatures see the sea cucumbers intestines flying out and they're like, don't mess with that guy. Yes, because they also are poisonous. But then so then do the threatening creatures die or do they just get like stung and they're like, this guy's wacko. Stay away from that guy. Stay away from Bernie over there who's throwing his intestines everywhere. You know, it's a good question. I wonder if they throw them because they're like, if you're going to eat me, you're going to eat this first and it's going to kill you. And then you're gonna, mm-hmm. everyone will know that you died by the hands of Bernie's intestines. I think it's one of those things where like you don't want people to bother you. So you like like, oh, like you don't want people to talk to you. So you get out your phone and you pretend you're like having a horrible conversation Mm -hmm. or like um, you don't want people to to approach you. So you wear your hoodie and you tie it up really tight. So only your eyes show or, um, you know, you don't you don't want people to to talk to you. So you so you. And start dancing in the middle of the street. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, I think all the times that I feel threatened is when I think that someone might come and have a conversation with me. It's almost like you read my react because this was <gasps> my react. A hundred percent is what do you do when you feel socially threatened? Not like for your life, but socially uncomfortable. Yeah, in real life, I don't do like I I don't dance or talk on the I don't do the phone the fake phone thing. I think uh, if I feel threatened socially, I just am my authentic self, and people tend to leave me gravitate home. towards it because no. your authentic self is pretty spectacular, and oh, I can't my. imagine anyone wanting to. That's where like oh Maggie's being her authentic self. I must go over to her right now, moth. To a flame. Maybe what happened to, just to bring this back, maybe when I had that conversation when I was postpartum with MJ Uh and I was like, wow, I need to take the LSAT. Maybe it was just like I was more aware that all of my conversations always are a little uncomfortable. Just a little bit. I post COVID, right, in this world, I don't know how to small talk. I was never really great at small talk anyways. I don't feel like. Like when I'm yeah. socially threatened, like if I see somebody that I know but I haven't spoken to, like if I'm like in Target or something or uh, walking around outside and I know this person and they're wa- like they're walking, they don't see me yet, I will I will turn around and go another direction. Like just a quick turn, like an about face. I don't know why. I get so anxious about it because I'm like I'm going to have to talk to this person and I don't know what I'm going to say and yeah. – What if, I don't know, it's weird, right? Yeah. No, it is weird. It's also what I'll say, if we're whispering now, is um, that it's harder in like one-on-one situations. Yes. Yes. If there's a group, you can flutter away. But I've always felt that. If there's a group, you can be like, oh, oh, I got to, oh my gosh, I got to go. You just kind of like turn your shoulder and then you can start to move towards someone else. But when it's like, oh, we're walking And then I see you have to have something to get Mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. You have to have like something. And sometimes I'm just like, okay, I got to go. Yeah, I know. That's what I do. Like, oh, I'm going to say that. Like as you're walking away, the talking and uh, like your voice gets thinned down. Like, I got to go. The key is to never stop. As to earth signs, Sarah and Maggie are always preparing. Which is why it's time to play Till Death Do Us Part. Aww, why? The game where they interview potential replacement besties in case the other one kicks the can. Sarah, this replacement bestie has Dallas roots but can be seen touring across the country and now calls Los Angeles home. 
Her comedy special, Nobody's Queen, is available on Amazon Prime and was named one of the best end-of-year comedy specials of 2021 by NPR. And I know you love NPR. She is an absolute joy. Sarah, please welcome Jasmine Ellis. Oh my gosh, Jasmine, I'm just going to tell you right now, with that NPR in your bio, I'm like, Maggie, do you have another place to be <laughs> so Jasmine can just come sit in for you? I am... I am very much an amateur NPR nerd. Like I like full disclosure. I don't think I'd actually listened until someone was like, you're on NPR. And I was like, I am. How? You know, like, and then I found out and I was like, oh, this is cool. So yeah, I guess I'm an NPR person now. I was on their bullseye end of the year list of like best comedy albums, which was fun. You know, it was a good list. Lori Kilmartin was on it. Um, Danny Jolla. So it was a fun year. It was a fun year. Good company. I mean, you're up there with Ira Glass, Terry Gross, all these icons <laughs> of NPR. Uh, well, we have some very serious business to get to because okay. we need to ask you some hard hitting questions, just like they would do on national public radio. Uh, I'll start. And then Sarah, I know is going to be tallying mm -hmm. a score to see if you would make a good replacement bestie. So no pressure, just be honest and truthful. I have the palm of my hand. I want to put some notes on here. So by the end of this conversation, I will be able to reveal Jasmine, if you would be a great replacement bestie. Okay. I never lose. So I'm all about this. Let's go. Okay. Your first question. Okay. Would you rather a six-month stand-up tour of college campuses or a six-month standing show in one of LA's best stages? Oh, okay. Now, can I ask any caveats or is it just a what, would you rather and that's it? There's like Sure. Every... Yeah, no. Ask some caveats. That's good. Okay. Do they both pay the same? Yes. Oh, then mm. definitely the, the, res, uh, the standing in LA's club because then okay. I, can, I can stay home. I um, mean, for sure, for sure. Also, I mean, here's the thing is this is not and LA crowds are not necessarily better than a college crowd. Like he's like comedians love to complain about college crowds. Oh, they're sensitive. Blah, blah, blah. They're just introspective. And they're literally just left the house. They don't know if they're allowed to laugh in public yet. They, those kids are afraid to order a McDonald's. Like they don't like speaking in public is weird to them. Laughing in real life is weird, but they're really receptive. Whereas like LA is full of weirdos. Think about rather than people, who have never been in public these are people who function only to be perceived so they're like like listen an la crowd is rough an la crowd you can absolutely tell your best stuff feel like you did good get tepid laughter and then afterwards someone whose face literally cannot move from botox is like i was dying i was cracking up like you had me in tears i was like can you cry that happens at least once a show <laughs> So the only reason why I would choose LA over that is because, um, you know, now that like the industry is starting to open back up, that could be like good, more, more exposure, if you will. So even if I went to like the best colleges, like no agency or casting directors or anything would be there. What would be one of your top colleges that you would want to go to? Oh, I tour a lot of colleges. Um, I just, it's kind of interesting because it's all over the map. I've done, I, I would say... Don't love rural colleges, no offense. Um, it's, <laughs> there's just, there's a certain vibe where what happens is like the, um, the student development organization is usually composed of like these amazing, wonderful LGBTQIA, femme plus, fabulous, sweet kids that are great and I love them and they love me and I'm the big sister they ever wanted. And they bring me to their college where the front row is a bunch of cowboys chewing dip. And <laughs> they, <laughs> would like me to kindly shut the up and bring their drinks. Like they are really, <laughs> they don't like me. And so I have to win them over. And, you know, afterwards, like the, the, the best compliment is when someone's just like, you're all right. Like, you know, I've, I've seen people, seen, seen some people on Joe Rogan and, and like, you were, you were all right. Okay. That is wow. the best oh a dip cowboy is going to give me the worst. I kid you not. I have a joke about astrology where I mentioned Beyonce. And after my, and it was, I was at this uh, technical college and this student comes up to me afterwards and he just goes, Beyonce sucks. And I was like, you could have said the N word. That's what you meant. That's, <laughs> no. that's what you meant. You said that Beyonce sucks to a black woman in her thirties is a racial slur. You tried to hurt yeah. me. <laughs> and it worked. That is hurtful. It was hurtful. On so many. Oh, my dream college. I didn't even actually answer the question. My dream college, I think would be um, Howard. 
I would, Howard, is, I did not go to an HBCU. Um, it just wasn't a possibility for me at the time. I didn't even, I don't know. I, I didn't have great grades. And so I just went to the closest school that would take me and a historically black university, especially Howard, because I joined Alpha Kappa Alpha. And that is where the Alpha chapter, that's the first chapter ever was. Jasmine, I appreciate you sharing and being open with us so much. And I love that you're so open and honest on social media. I love watching your stand-up clips that you post. So my question for you, if given the choice, what dead social media would you want to bring back? Vine or MySpace? Ooh. Mm, Vine or MySpace, Vine or MySpace, Vine or MySpace. Here's the thing is Vine essentially just evolved into TikTok. I can't, I was never on Vine, so I can't really think of any discernible differences. Whereas MySpace at least encouraged a lot of individuality. And it was so much more like, I miss when social media was more about socializing with people you knew than like having this like following. Because now it's all about having a following and so and selling something to them, which is like, it makes sense, but it, it's frustrating because it's like, I, I feel like that's why trolling is so intense now because people who don't think they can ever have a following troll because they're angry. They're like, I'm not going to get, like you got, this video got 30,000 likes. You got 30,000 people's attention. I can get your attention if I call you a fat, stupid bitch who's not funny, which God, oh my God, I've been getting trolled so much lately. And it's like, it doesn't hurt me as much as I'm just tired. Like every, I had to turn the notifications off and I really hate that I'm like missing people who genuinely want to connect with me because I want to leave myself open to that. But I'm realizing that for like common sense and self-preservation, I have to close stuff off. Anyways, that just wasn't happening back in the MySpace days. So in my head, MySpace would be better because people would be more focused on figuring out what codes to give their page skins and what song to pick. And it would be all about expressing themselves. Look, look, nobody's trolling on Pinterest because you're just, you're just, focusing on your interests. So I feel like if it was more self-focused, it would be less on attacking others. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Pinterest. Obviously Pinterest is a safe, safe place. I've never been called a fat bitch on Pinterest. Uh, I have been given dieting tips unsolicited, but. <laughs> oh my God. Not Pinterest. like, not like a not by a person, just an algorithm. It was like you were you were looking at a recipe with carrots, which means you want to work on your glutes. You know what I mean? But that's rude, kind of like natural progression. For rude. Me. Like, you can't you can't blame anybody. But listen, I would I'd still totally say MySpace. MySpace. I think we should um, even bring back the top eight because let's be realistic. If you focus on eight yeah. close friends, I think that's better than fifty thousand followers. So yeah. Okay. So you're someone who's not only funny, but you're also a very talented makeup artist, I believe, from my purview. And so I'm curious, what is something that's more important for someone to not look tired like The Walking Dead? And this is a personal question for me. Uh, is it mascara or is it concealer? Ooh, what's more important? Good question. It honestly depends on your eye shape. Are your eyelids heavy or do you have bags under your eyes? If it's both, <laughs> then it's I, both. if it's both, I don't, um, then both. Um, mascara can really open the eyes by making the lashes darker and longer and thicker that like opens the eyes up. Um, okay. You know what? It depends on if, if you're, la if you're blonde, Maggie, you are blonde. Mm -hmm. Are your lashes blonde? They are very light brown. Then I would say mascara. Mascara is going to make a bigger okay. difference. I think if you have naturally dark lashes, concealer does more for you. This is good. I think Sarah and I would have opposite. I'm writing this down. I needed that. I have a score for you, Jasmine. You ready for it? If for some reason Maggie and my's friendship would come to an end, I would love to have you to take her place. I would be so honored to be your new bestie. I'll help you shop for mascara. I will call you at odd hours of the day because I will never remember the time changes. Um, so that is what all of my friends in Texas can look forward to me being like, what do you mean 10 o'clock is late? You know, so <laughs> that's, that's what you can look forward to. <laughs> 
Jasmine, where can people find you on the internet and what do you have going on? Oh yeah, I'm all over the place. I'm everywhere at Jasmine Ellis Comedy. Um, you can find me on TikTok under that, on Instagram under that. Uh, if you go on YouTube, I have a new 10 minute special, uh, 10 minute special. It feels weird to say that, but I guess that's what we're doing. Companies are bringing multiple cameras and angles out and filming it. So I have a filmed 10 minute set with Don't Tell Comedy that I think is super fun. It's called Save the Extroverts, uh, parentheses, itty bitty big bitch. And I think it's um, a lot of fun and really funny and I'm super proud of it. So you should check that out. And then I have a album called um, Trash Baby that I self-produced way back in 2019. That's still hilarious. And you can find that everywhere. And well, not everywhere, but all of like Apple Music, Spotify, all of that. And then um, sometimes I'm serious. Well, everyone go ahead and follow Jasmine. Thank you so much for being our guesty bestie today. We had a ble- the best time. I, you were trying to say blast and the best at the same time. I did. I know. It was really hard. <laughs> and then you to say. almost said a blessed time. And I was like, that was so live, love, laugh of you. I- it was. And I'm not regretting it. I hope this all makes it in the edit, Sarah Adams. <laughs> It's a Festy Connection. Thanks for playing along. Thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, we would love a review, subscribe, or for you to share this with a friend you think would like it. Or all three of those things. You can do all three and make our day and help us grow. If longer than three minute podcast is too much for you, you can always catch an abbreviated version of our show over on Jam by texting unstable topics to 552266. And you can catch more of our antics on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok under the username The Monthly Junk or at themonthlyjunk.com. Bye. Peace. Peace.